Let's get more on this now from Jackie Ivanko and her transgender sister, Juliet. Thank you both for joining us this morning. And, and Jackie, let me begin uh, with you. We saw your tweet in Cecilia's piece. Have you heard back from the president? No, I have not heard back yet that I know of, but um, I'm hoping soon. <laughs> and, and, and if you get that meeting, what do you want to tell him? I, don't, I guess I just want to enlighten him on what my sister, I've seen her go through every single day in school and people just like her, what they deal with, the discrimination, it's terrible. And I guess I kind of just really want him to relook at that. And, and Juliet, what does the president need to know about what you go through every day? Basically that uh, being at a high school where the policies on the bathroom are unclear, um, I, as Jackie has said, I kind of live it every day um, going through discrimination. I've had things thrown at me. I've had people say pretty horrible things. Um, and the unsafe environment is just very unhealthy. So I feel like Donald Trump needs to know that being in such an unsafe environment won't do any good for not only the transgenders in the LGBT community, but as well as everyone as a whole. So did your life change when the guidelines came out from President Obama, Juliet? Um, the, so far, luckily, nothing's very much changed for me. Um, of course, when I heard about it, I was very disappointed, and I realized that we would need to take action in order to enlighten the administration on everything. But has your school overall been protective of you? Um, overall, yes. And, and Jackie, of course, you did sing at the inaugural. The president was a big fan. Would you sing again? Mm -hmm. Most definitely because the reason why I did sing for the inauguration was not politics, it was for the honor and the privilege to perform for my country. Um, and that will stay the same, I think. Okay, let's hope you hear from the president. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's get more on this now from our chief legal analyst, Danny Abrams, right here as well. So what's the practical impact of what the president has done? Well, instead of viewing this as a civil rights issue, a fundamental question of discrimination, where the schools don't have any choice, it's now going to go back to them to be able to decide what they want to do. But keep in mind, there's already a nationwide temporary injunction in place, which effectively means this directive from President Obama isn't being executed right now anyway. So when it comes to what happens today, is there a difference today? No. Is there going to be a difference in the future? Yes. And, and eventually this whole issue of transgender bathroom rights is almost certain to be decided by the Supreme Court. Well, it's already in front of the Supreme Court. Um, there's a case, the Gavin Grimm case, which is supposed to be a big case. The problem is that the lower courts were deciding that case based on the President Obama directive. That became an important point. So if you don't have that directive anymore and you don't have the administration defending it in that way, you've got a fundamentally different case. And so the question now is, is the Supreme Court going to say, wait a sec, if this is the administration's position on this now, we're going to send this back to the lower courts and we're not even going to hear this case that we were supposed to decide so next month. Yeah, well, but I think in the, in the end, it will eventually end up there in some way, shape or form to answer the fundamental question. Is this a Title IX violation? Is this a civil rights case? Because if you have different rulings coming from different circuits in the country, you're probably going to end up in the Supreme okay, Court. Dan Abrams, thanks very much.